I'm Dr. Jack Gilbert, and this is a peanut. Food allergies, unlike intolerances, are the body overreacting to certain problem foods such as peanuts, milk or shellfish, causing a histamine reaction which gives you those hives and inflammation. This is a major problem. It affects 32 million American and Europeans, that's 1 in 13 children. In America alone, we spend $25 billion a year trying to tackle this problem. But what's more alarming is the rate is increasing. Over the last 20 years, we've seen a 50% jump in the number of cases in children alone. So what is causing this? One potential mm. cause could be a reduction in the diversity of microbes that we are exposed to. By spending less time outdoors, at home and at work, and through the indiscriminate use of antibacterial soaps and cleaning products that kill the good bacteria along with the bad, we have reduced our exposure to the microbes that we as a species evolved with, which may have inadvertently left us open to an increase in allergic reactions. <laughs> The bacteria in our bodies help our immune system respond appropriately to allergens. Therefore, by adding the right kinds of bacteria back into our bodies, we think it might be possible to desensitise children to allergens and give them a new lease on life. At Argonne National Laboratory and the University of Chicago, research led by Professor Kathy Nagler and Taylor Feely is helping to identify the right kinds of bacteria that help our bodies respond appropriately to problem foods. So our lab is very interested in understanding how the bacteria that live in our intestines may regulate whether or not we develop food allergies. To begin to answer this question, we compared the microbiotas of healthy infants versus infants who had been diagnosed with cow's milk allergies, and we found that they were very different. We then treated the allergic infants with a special probiotic formula and looked at the microbiota again after treatment. After treatment, there was an expansion of butyrate-producing bacteria, and this was important because butyrate is associated with health. We also found a role for butyrate-producing bacteria in protection against peanut allergy in a mouse model. And so now we're putting all of this information together to develop potential new therapeutics for people with food allergies. The University of Chicago recently became part of the Food Allergies Research and Education Network, which, through the leadership of Christina Chacho, is starting to take the research out of the lab and into the clinic so that children can start benefiting from these bacterial therapeutics as soon as possible. Our center has four primary goals. The first is to work with new mothers and pregnant mothers to try and prevent food allergy in their children. The second is to provide high-level care for children with food allergy. The third is to work with our communities, our schools, our churches, community centers, to make sure they're prepared in case of a food allergic emergency. And the fourth is to work with our scientists like Dr. Nagler and Taylor Feely to bring their discoveries here to our clinic to see if we can develop new treatments. As we learn more about how the bacteria in our gut prevent our body from overreacting to problem foods, we arm ourselves with new knowledge. Knowledge that then needs to be translated into new therapies so we can help people, especially children, who suffer from these conditions. Co-locating this new centre alongside immunologists and microbiome scientists is a first step towards developing these new therapies. And who knows, maybe in the near future, food allergies will be nothing but a distant memory all thanks to the trillions of microbes living happily inside us.